you're over there to raise money for your real estate fund. Correct. From the guy from Burisma, because he's just a rich guy looking to diversify. They make a ton of money right. selling natural gas, and they want to invest it. Right. He's not interested in your pitch. And he says, by the way, since you're here, I'd like you to talk to the president of Poland. Yes. Who then calls you. Yes. Yes. It was coordinated by Vadim, but yes, eventually we somehow got you know, connected on WhatsApp. And yes, calls me, invites me to Poland. I was on a plane. I was on a a lot flight from, or whatever the airline, what the airline's called, uh, I think it's left, um, from JFK within a couple days. And I flew directly to Warsaw for 36 hours, sat down with Kwasniewski and he said, listen, we've got a great opportunity, energy independence for Ukraine. Uh, this company, Burisma, I joined the board. Um, there's a, you know, we've looked at your profile. I know, you, you know, you've got Rosemont. We, you can raise, and, and the, the, the idea was to raise ca outside capital for Burisma. So they were like, come join the board. Very high paying opportunity. Um, wasn't, you know, we weren't, we didn't talk details on that in that particular meeting, but he's like, trust me, and there's there's a chance to build an equity position in this business, and this could be, you know, the next Exxon of Ukraine or whatever. I think yeah. there's, there's some some discovery emails that talk about that. Yeah. So well, why wouldn't it have been? I mean, it was a, it was right, a it was, real company. Exactly. Real company, incredible management team, you know, new age equipment. Uh, but why you? Why me? Because I was I was a bereaver. <laughs> you were a true bereaver, huh? Yeah, I was a bereaver. No, why me? <laughs> it was no, it's just interesting because you, I mean, you're raising money for a real estate fund, but then the guy from the natural gas company says, talk to the president of Poland about joining the board of our natural gas company. Right. They, you know, was, was Hunter Biden mentioned at all? Hunter Biden was not mentioned, though, I mean, I can't deny that they did some research about Rosemont Seneca partners, but... Because it just seems uh, like... It was, not mentioned, it was not mentioned to me. It's a little... I mean, you sound like a very capable business operator, um, but not someone who specializes in the, in the energy sector. No, I've had, I've had a diverse portfolio. Right. Well, now, now you know a lot about now energy. Now I do, yeah. Yeah, but then... Right, agreed. Agreed. I had one energy investment that we had, we had made in Texas, but that's true. I was not... A, I was certainly not... By any stretch of the imagination, an expert in you know excavating natural gas, right? But the Still. president of Poland is asking you to yes. jump the port. I mean, by the way, lots of weird things happen in life, but I just kind of suspect that maybe they were. This was all about getting Hunter Biden involved. You know, I, I, I actually I do I think that they saw an opportunity to raise. I think that they thought that I was close enough to political powers that that. I don't think that was their initial intention, to be completely honest. I don't think they were like, I was a mark that they identified and then found Hunter. I think it was a little bit more natural than that. And at the end of the day, you know, similar to kind of what happened in my fate that, you know, be careful what you wish for. Yeah. So how did he get involved? How so did he, he get so it was it, so it was as you as you go, you know, go on with the progression of the story. So I, he's obviously a partner, and we're, we're always looking to, you know, incent each other and include each other in, 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 in you know, in, in each of our opportunities. And what happened was I came back, I joined the board, or I started the process of joining the board. I, I did join the board. I think I was on the board in, in March of that year of 2014. It was probably my first, first month there. And then I came back, and, hot, and Hunter was, was of counsel. Um, and so what I did is I brought, I brought, uh, uh, him on board, uh, uh, you know, as counsel to legally represent the company and help them, and you know, basically uh, um, have a a firm in D.C. that would look out for their best interests, or you know, kind of their, you know, any kind of geopolitical. <laughs> I'm sorry, any... I, I'm calling bullshit on just this one thing. That's okay, fine. so this is a city filled with law firms. <laughs> yes. Where every yeah, but Hunter was my partner. I know, I know. <laughs> Just saying, like, this is a city where the number one job for a college-educated Caucasian man is lawyer at a firm. Right, exactly. Right, and a lot of those firms deal with you know, yes. foreign transactions yes. and business and whatever. Hunter Biden doesn't have actually like a meaningful history as a as a practicing attorney. I mean, he's no, like, no, he's always been, he's been right. in the kind of lobbying world. So, I mean, that's an influence play, right? There. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I think. Well. Also, I think the firm that he's with counsel was was prominent and had a you know had a large business in lobbying. So I think right. you know I think uh, it made sense and it was also 
incenting a business partner of ours. And it was a business partner of mine. I think it was, yeah. you know, it, 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 was, it made all the logic in the world. And I think if it stayed like that, it would have been, you know, a little... It, history, <laughs> history would have been very different. <laughs> history would have been So different. how did he wind up on the board of Burisma? So what happened was we quickly developed... They, we brought a t There was a team that, from Burisma that came in to D.C., did some meetings. Um, you know, there was a, a kind of a lead practitioner on the law side that was brought in to be like the... You know, Hunter was a relationship manager, relationship manager, and then there was like a lead for what things that needed to be done. We needed to lobby. Is for relationship this and that. manager is that like a business card title? That it, well, it's it's generally like of counsel at these law firms. Are it's to make introductions. Yeah, of That's, course. I just love I that want phrase. One of those. I should have gone to law school. <laughs> exactly. I aspire to be that. <laughs> no, it's it's so good great. big if you can get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so no, th this is a natural progression. So we hire, and then so. You know, a month or two goes by. We're at an economic conference in Italy, Lake Como, at the which was nice, um, beautiful. Or, hotel. or if I can say, as, as your friend Vadim calls it in a letter, I want to ask you about in a minute that we got is May of 2014. Following our talks during the visit to the Como Lake, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes he's the Como Lake. <laughs> exactly, Lake yeah, Lake Como. Absolutely, it was it was gorgeous, gorgeous weather, and it was May of yes. 2014. Um, and so, you know, that trip in DC to Vadim had been on that trip. I forget that there's other executives there, um, meeting at the law firm in the conference center or large conference room and, and got a lot done. And, you know, it seemed to be off to a good start. Uh, they visited us, Vadim and Nikolai visited us at, uh, the Villa Deste at this economic conference. Um, and they struck and Hunter, uh, you know, was, was of, you know, the relationship manager at the time of council and, they, you know, kind of struck up a conversation and Kwasniewski um, was not there, but on WhatsApp and kind of in the conversation. And I think, you know, similar to what, as opposed to like me being a mark and an orchestrated effort to get Hunter on board, I yeah. think they all of a sudden saw, you know, the, what, you know, what I, what I, what I brought, the relationship that I brought yes. by doing this and thought, wait, we can go a step further. We got the president of Poland. We've got this, you know, a couple of finance guys on the board. We've got a couple of, uh, Ukrainians and Cypriots for regulatory reasons in those, you know, in those domiciles and if and we can get the son of the vice president on the board and You know, they saw that opportunity and they made the offer and um, I think uh, at, at the meeting in Lake Como at the meeting in Lake, yes, yeah, so that's meeting Lake. I was not that's... I was not at that meeting But it was a meeting that was done in a sidebar that in the idea came back and I think a month later it was So what's so interesting? So here's this letter that I referred to at sure. the Como Lake uh, and it's May 12th, 2014, 8.29 uh, a.m. And this is from Vadim Pazharsky to you and Hunter. And he goes on and it's kind of complicated uh, about what he's talking about corruption in Ukraine. But he gets here. He says, we urgently need, urgently need your advice on how you could use your influence to convey a message, signal, etc. to stop what we consider to be politically motivated actions, etc. And that's from Vadim. So right. They they figured it out right away. Absolutely. Yes. That the 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 term signal in every other kind of market or theater or whatever you want to describe, it, it's like a pretty um, it, it's a well used term. So signal like like the U S is doesn't use it, but it's a very common term to send signals between government and business because government can always shut you down. It's almost like right. the you know, the, the shakedown kind of, it's, I, I try to equate, equate it something, but you always want to be sending positive signals from that regulatory body, i.e. the government, to the business that you're not going to be shut down. Right. And so I think they're using in, in you know, common term to them and sending back here to us and say, you know, like, oh, I hope we're protected kind of thing. That's that's the, the term signal. Well, you just flat yeah. out, well, just flat flat out, out says it. Yeah, exactly. We urgently need your advice on how you can use your influence. Right. Right. So, um, and that's all kind of, again, just for context, it's pretty conventional. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what lobbying firms are for. Yes. But then comes the question of General Shokan, hmm. the prosecutor. Right. Tell us, that's, that seems to me, that's when it gets heavy. Right. Okay. So what was that? So Shokin was the, that he, and I, I'm going to get the dates wrong, but Shokin was the, uh, he was the prosecutor, the head prosecutor in Ukraine. Um, and he was taking a close look at Burisma. So maybe not so different from an attorney general. Right. 
Right. And and uh, but he was taking, but I, much more case active. I think. Right. The attorney general is more of like a manager of right. people that handle cases and they have their independence. This but is this like, guy's the law. He's like the law. Yeah. So the buck stops with him. Hence, the signals are more important yes. in countries outside the United States. Uh, so Shokin is taking a close look at uh, a close look at Burisma. Um, there were allegations that some of the, um, you know, some of the the deposits or some of the some of the reserves were not, you know, authentically got, you know, authentically acquired or whatever it may yes. be. And so those were like the I think that was the genesis of the uh, the complaints. And there was always there were always you know being in Ukraine and being in that part of the world there was always kind of challenges that they were facing. You know, they're, they're from, from not being able to get a visa to money being tied up in London. And this was just another, you know, in a series of, um, of issues that, that law firms and, and strategic advisory firms were hired for to, you know, to handle these kind of things, right? Yeah. So um, the, Shokin, the Shokin case was he was taking a look at Burisma and there was a big push by European leaders, the Atlantic Council, et cetera, et cetera, um, to to fire Shokin because he was corrupt. Like it's it's hard to kind of decipher who's corrupt. You know, it's all Can I just kind ask of you just yeah. sidebar, like why would the Atlantic Council be getting involved they have, in Shokin well, I, I, here? I mean that's yeah. the, I mean I think I think I don't know I don't know on the Shokin piece. I mean again I mean I this was, is the lead prosecutor in Ukraine. Right. So if Ukraine is actually a country with sovereignty and not just a colony of, say, the neocons in the United States, like why wouldn't they just let Ukraine deal with their own? Like why would why would Western powers even get involved in who the chief prosecutor in Ukraine is? I that, that's a, a question that I don't know. Young hear people say the news is full of lies. Two hundred and thirty-nine people. The death of Jeffrey Epstein. 